Hey, this is Mike from Keep On Growing, and today we're going to do a quick update on the garden tower that we built, let you know how it's doing. We're going to talk a little bit about the crop that we're growing in it, the kale, and we're going to address a couple of uh, questions or problems that arose too. So first off, you can see it's coming in very nice. Uh, we're really happy with it, and we've already been eating some kale off of here. Now, if you notice, you can see this one side has come in really well. And it's, it's full and it's bushy and it's going to continue to grow. But on this other side, it looks a little sparse. You can see some like empty spaces in here. Now, the holes on this side, if you recall, if you watched the video where we built this, the holes are spaced evenly all the way around. So there's just as many holes on this side. There's just as many plants on this side as there are on the full side and that's in part because the Sun comes up over here let me show you up so in the morning around 10 a.m. we get a whole lot of Sun in here all the way through midday then around 2 or 3 o'clock you can see we get shade again so this one side doesn't get the morning Sun and it gets afternoon shade and it's basically in the shade all day long I'm growing a lot of kale because we eat a lot of kale for one thing but another reason is that we can see how these things are working uh, if we do it over and over again and it's not just a fluke that we've just done it once this way when we figure out how something works we keep doing it over and over and over again and it's not like we come out here and just plant in the spring and just plant in the fall once you figure this out you'll be able to have a continuous harvest of leafy greens whenever you want so this is part of the, the continuous harvest thing that I talk about with the system and uh, I go into deeper in the online course the thing is linked down in the description it's really cheap like 10 bucks or something but these sprouts are the same ones that we transferred to the garden tower and they're also the ones that you see in the downspouts over here so you can see them at different stages but they're the same sprouts they all started at the same time now some people have asked me if you can leave them inside of these microgreen trays and the answer is yes if you just want to grow like baby greens and you can see you get a handful of baby greens but there's all those plants fighting for room space air and nutrients and you can see that once you take them out and you give them more room and you give them more nutrients just like in the downspouts they'll have more room to flourish and they'll get bigger and then when you put them in something even bigger like the garden tower you know then you get an even bigger plant so I just wanted you guys to see that all these different plants here 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 all of this kale all came from that one little black tray of microgreens so not that much seed you've got a whole lot of kale here but you can see that once you get them into a bigger space more nutrients more airflow that they're gonna thrive so overall, we're just thrilled with this. We're going to build a couple more when we get some extra time. How do you check the level of the nutrients? And if you can look down at the bottom here, where the cat's at, I can actually see the level of the nutrients in there. So, you know, it's not really easy, but I can see it. I don't know if you guys can see it on film. I can see where the nutrients are. The cat even knows where the nutrient level is. But that's what I just look down there and I can tell if it's half full or, or full or what. And one more quick problem that I had was if you notice down on the bottom, the mulch is wet. It means something's dripping. And if it continues to drip like that for days, then all of my nutrients will be gone. So I have to figure out where that's coming from. And one thing with these pool noodles is that if your plant gets really big and it curves down some of the water might drip out so all i'm going to do is get a pool noodle like this one and cut it a little bigger angle it up and then the water drips back inside so simple fix if you don't want to bother with this with the pool noodles you can always spend a lot more money and get a bunch of fixtures the plumbing fixtures the elbows and put plumbing elbows on all of this like we've seen in some of the other videos 
I like to do it really simple. Like we said, we did this one for only 68 bucks. Um, the pool noodles are $1.25 where I live. So, you know, I can cut about, what, I got four feet, eight, eight to 10 of these out of one pool noodle. It's not that expensive and it doesn't take a lot of time. So I'm just gonna stick with the pool noodle idea. We're gonna let the greens grow for a little while and I'm thinking I might pull these out and maybe put tomatoes in here or something people are asking about tomatoes so y'all let me know if you want me to see how a tomato plant would do in here all right you guys get out there like I said do like you always do and just keep spreading the love we got people all over the world are growing like this and and that's all thanks to you guys you guys are wonderful we'll catch you next time lift inspire keep on growing be the change much love Ba-da-da!